Hey guys, welcome back to Gear and Style. I have a new project for y'all today. Um, this one was a little bit of a uh, learning experience for me. So I will be narrating for the most part and explaining what I found out and what I did. Let's go. Now this is a pair of used Allen M. McAllister's that I purchased from eBay. Now this is my first experience uh, buying used shoes and as I mentioned it was somewhat of a um, learning experience for me. So I didn't get these for myself, I got these for one of my cousins. He and I were uh, talking about shoes the other day and I kind of wanted to introduce him to the higher quality aspect of shoes. So at first glance the shoes uh, seemed to be in great shape. Um, the soles uh, were pretty worn but still seemed to have plenty of wear left. Once that sole starts to soften up, um, then you'll know it will be time to replace it soon. The top lifts are also pretty worn, but still have some mileage left as well. Uh, you want to avoid wearing into the heel block, so as soon as you see that getting close, you'll want to replace that top lift. And this is something any uh, decent cobbler should be able to easily do. So as I was inspecting the uppers, I noticed a different sheen that is not typical of a full grain leather upper. I also noticed some areas of the shoe where that finish had come off. At first I thought that the previous owner had used some sort of acrylic paint to refinish these, but after doing a little research and asking around, I realized that these were in fact corrected grain leather. So basically what corrected grain leather is, uh, they take a piece of leather and sand away all the pores and imperfections, and in this case dyed with a semi-aniline coating, which gives it this semi-glossy sheen. So not all corrected leather is bad, just like you have different quality levels of leather as far as full grain, top grain and genuine leather, the same applies to corrected leather. In this case it was probably a full grain leather that had blemishes such as scars and mosquito bites and was sanded just enough to remove those imperfections. This helps cut costs because unblemished leather hides are naturally more costly. Uh, more commonly you'll find corrected leather that has been stamped with some sort of pattern uh, to give it some texture such as this piece of leather I have the shoes on. So first thing we want to do is get these shoes disinfected. I used uh, regular household disinfectant and wiped the inside of the shoes thoroughly. After letting the disinfectant do its thing for a few minutes, I used some baking soda to help absorb moisture and any odors in the shoe and I left it like this overnight. So after removing the baking soda the next day, it was time to attempt to remove the finish. Since this is not your typical leather dye, I was told that it would not be easy to do so. So at first I used a cotton cloth with the acetone and I began to notice the finish softening up. One thing I noticed is that as the acetone begins to dry on the cloth, the finish becomes very sticky and lint residue sticks to the shoe. So I was at this for quite some time and at this point I realized that I was not going to be able to expose the bare leather like this and I was going to have to use some more drastic methods. I tried using an old toothbrush and as you can see I'd made some progress but it was still taking too long. Next I tried using a kitchen scrubber. This one has natural fibers so as soon as it made contact with the acetone it softened up and was essentially useless as well. The next thing I tried was my small inexpensive soy brush which has synthetic bristles that are harder than the toothbrush that I was using so this one seemed to do the trick. Still though this took some patience and a lot of elbow grease to completely remove the finish. So I skipped over the stripping of the second shoe for experience's sake and now here they are completely stripped. 
So now that I have exposed the bare leather, you can definitely feel how it has been sanded smooth. Uh, so let's see now how it takes to dye. Uh, I used a burgundy leather dye and then uh, some black for the accents. After applying the base coat of burgundy, I used a little bit of acetone just to lighten up the color a bit. After the base color is applied, we give them a little buff and then we move on to the black accent tones. Remember the trick here is not to oversaturate the brush and then always move from dark to light and take your time. You'll notice that I'm moving back and forth between brush and rag to help me blend the accent tones a little bit better. Sometimes I would even use just a little bit of acetone if I got black dye where I didn't want it. Okay, so I'm done with the dye portion now and I'm applying some leather moisturizer. Remember the acetones and the alcohol based dyes that we're using really dry up the leather. So we have to make sure to moisturize and get some hydration back into the leather. I'm also using this brush because I really want to make sure to get into the welt with the moisturizer um, because of all the acetone that I had to use to remove the original finish.
just a little bit of black cream polish on the accent areas only. Next I use burgundy cream polish on the rest of the shoe. After buffing up the cream polish, we move on to the wax polish. So this project is now done. I skipped over the mirror shine and keep this video on the short side. It's turned out great um, and I'm really glad that it all worked out. I had not found a good precedent online for this type of project so I'm really glad that it all worked out for me. Uh, and I'm sure my cousin is going to love them as well. Uh, the last thing I got to do, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to buy some few laces for them. Uh, my local Allen Edmund store is open again so I'm going to swing by sometime. Uh, tomorrow or the day after and pick up some, some laces for them and uh, then I'll pop a final picture at the end of the video uh, thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed this video uh, please like and subscribe if you like this type of content